In this video, I'll show you some strategies on how you can fully automate your station if you happen to be using a third party music scheduling solution to create a daily playlist. Now the music rotation logic within Sam Broadcaster Cloud is sufficient for most of our customers, but there are dedicated music scheduling solutions out there that is indeed more powerful. So if you happen to have one of those solutions and you wish to use that with some broadcaster cloud uh, in this video i'll give you some nice tips on how to make your life easier now just for those that's not aware a music scheduling solution looks at your library and decides what music to play and it uses a lot of rules and settings you can adjust to make that happen now for example music one music master Power Gold is some examples of music scheduling software. There's a lot more options out there. I just wanted to mention those three as an example. It's worth mentioning that even if you're not using a third party scheduling solution, you can use the same system to manually create your daily playlist as well. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to create a playlist for each and every day. So let's do one for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So now we have a playlist for each day of the week. The next step is to go to our scheduled events. And what I'll do is I'll go for Monday and I'll create the event. And I would want this to load exactly at midnight. And I'm going to call this Monday playlist. And I'm going to give this actually about an hour on the display. Even though I expect this to run for the entire day, for display purposes, I just want it to be in about an hour long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first clear the queue, which is a very important step. And then I'm going to add a playlist to the queue. So the playlist that I want to add is Monday. And I want to add it to the bottom of the queue. And I'm going to save that. So that's my Monday playlist. So just scroll up here and you can see at midnight on Monday, I'm going to load the Monday playlist. I'm going to repeat those step for each and every day. And I'll use a different color for each day just to identify them clearly. So let me do another one. Let's do Tuesday playlist. I want to do one hour and I want to clear the queue and add the playlist. Oh, sorry, I want to add playlist to queue is what I want to do. So I want to do Tuesday and I want to add it to the bottom of the queue. Something I actually forgot in the previous one as well. I don't want it to happen only once. I want it to happen every weekday, so I'm going to repeat it every Tuesday. And that's going to happen forever. So let's save that. So again, if I scroll up here, see Tuesday playlist here. Um, I forgot another thing, I wanted to make each one a different color, so I'll do that as well. So what you'll notice here is, if I click to the next week, you can see that Monday is not repeating, so we definitely have to fix that as well. Go to Monday, put it to repeat on weekdays, and let's repeat every Monday. And now save. And let's just make sure that it's now repeating for every week. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of the week like that. And there you have it, a playlist or a scheduled event for each day that will load the specific playlist into the queue. But first step, it will clear the queue and then add that playlist into the queue. 
So the next thing I want to do is actually go to my queue and turn the loop queue to on. That's important because say I've only scheduled 20 hours of music for some reason, then instead of falling back to a playbook, it will just rotate that day's music again, if that's what you prefer. Otherwise, you can set up a playbook instead that will pick music. Okay, so the final step is really to make sure at least a few hours before the end of the day to put items in the playlist. So if this was my Monday playlist, I could have just manually filled it up like this, um, putting in sweepers, promos and ads in between. Or I could use my third party scheduling tool, create the playlist file, an uh, M3U playlist file and import that directly. So I could be using um, this import function and saying playlist file. If I'm using the web playlist import tool, however, it's important to know that all the files must physically already exist in your library. The, due to security reasons, the browser is not able to go out and search for tracks on your local disk and import them into your library. All it can do is read the playlist file, see what the file name is of that of those items, match those items to the items already in, in the library, and then add them to the playlist. If you know that some of the files won't be existing in the library yet, then you need to use the library import tool to automate the process of importing files. And I'll actually cover that a little bit later in this video as well. But let's assume that all the tracks is already existing in your library. I'll go ahead and then import my playlist. So here I have a playlist called Monday.m3u and I'm going to open it and import it. And you can see that it found nine media items and there was one missing media item. So in this case, it failed to find one of the media items. So you may need to go upload that one missing item and then try again. But here you can see my playlist is imported for the day. And now if Monday comes around, this playlist will be loaded in the queue and will play in that exact order for my Monday playlist. Let's take a moment to look at the contents of the Monday.m3u playlist file. Usually the format of the files are really basic where, let me open it with notepad, every line in the file is basically a track, the location of a track on your system. So you can see here's a fully qualified path, the music demo and then the file name. Or here's a relative path that says go up one directory, then down one directory and go to music demo stinger. Otherwise go use again a relative path. Here we, because there's no path, we expect the files to be located in the same folder as where monday.m3u is located. So this is typically how your uh, music scheduler would output a playlist of items to be imported into the cloud. Now imagine you spend 30 minutes once a week to generate seven playlists, each one for each day of the week, import those into some broadcaster cloud into the specific playlist, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. to Sunday. And you spend 30 minutes to do that. And now for the rest of the week, you basically have nothing to do because every day at midnight, a new playlist will be loaded and the day will be scheduled. So that reduces your workload quite significantly. Earlier I mentioned the downside of using your browser to upload a playlist is that it's not able to go out and find missing tracks located within the playlist. This is where the library import utility can help. This is a command line tool you can use to import tracks, import playlists, bulk import tracks, so it's very useful if you have a large library of thousands of tracks that you want to import, or if you want to automate the entire process. Since it's a command line utility, you can use existing system tools to execute 
the command line utility at specified times to automate certain tasks for you. So to find the library import utility, go to upload. And once that's done loading, go to import, import utility. And there you will find a download for Windows, Mac and Linux. So choose the correct download for your operating system, install it and then refer to the user guide or the dedicated video. Um, there's some more tutorial videos dedicated to the use of the library import utility to learn more about this. Just to give you a bit more background, here's the command line options for the library import utility. And it's a basic command line tool you use to scan for tracks and upload tracks and also importing playlists. And again, watch out for the video dedicated to that topic and this can help you a lot in automating many tasks for your station. I hope you learned in this tutorial how automating your station can save you a lot of time and effort and I hope you found some inspiration to come up with your own strategies to automate your station. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.